Hey friends, Dustin here. You're watching the Life of Lynn channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. And a huge shout out to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. More on that later. But right now, let's jump right back into our 1986 luxury Barth Motorhome and preparing it for its first winter storm. Today, we're back on the Barth Motorhome. Yes, it's still here. But it's winter time. It's, you know, Christmas is around the corner, so... I haven't really touched this thing, you know, I'm a, I'm a summertime camping kind of guy. I'm going to try some winter camping this year. So we're going to go back through the systems on this Barth Motorhome, make sure they're ready for winter. It has three furnaces, three furnaces, not including the heater on the engine up front, um, or the two electric heaters inside the air conditioner. So really, what is that? Three, four, five, six, six different methods of heat in here. So you should be able to get it going. <clears throat> now this morning I went out here and turned the furnaces on for the first time in three or four months, just to remind myself of there was one that wasn't working. And now there's two that aren't working. So I've been messing around with that. I'll show you what I got going on. If you guys watched the uh, older episode of what's wrong with the Barth Motorhome, you'll know that this front one would not fire. I got it all taken apart right now. We're gonna dig into that. Got some extra control boards out. Um, and this one wouldn't fire this morning. So I took it all apart and cleaned it. Still wouldn't fire. Ended up grabbing. Yeah, man. Just come off of there. Yeah. I'm grabbing a new control board. This is off of a uh, newer furnace, but they're all pretty much the same. They're universal ignition control boards. Uh, they have the same pigtails, and then they got an igniter. This controls your gas valve, your furnace motor, uh, and all the safety switches like the sales switch and the over temp switch. And they're all pretty much the same on almost every RV furnace ever since the 80s. That's why I was able to interchange them with the old ones to this one. Uh, when I swapped it over, I was able to get this one to fire off again. So I've cleaned this one again and um, we're just running it, get it nice and hot, make sure it's gonna do a nice long cycle without any breakage. So that one's running. Uh, the third furnace has always worked. That is the back bedroom furnace. That one's over here, right there. Fired this one up, it was working fine, so no issues there. One thing I did note as I turned the propane back on is I was getting some noise out of the old regulator there, so I think that one's uh, got a leaking diaphragm. I don't smell any gas now that uh, the appliances are working, so I don't know if it uh, pushed itself into a position where it's temporarily sealed, but it was definitely hissing when I first turned it on. So I'll probably end up replacing that. And then the inside, we got, we got heat. It smells like burnt hair, which isn't great, but there's a lot of hot air coming out of there. So the middle furnace has duct work that goes all underneath all this stuff. We blow out into the kitchen, through these places. It also blows out in underneath the bathroom sink and heats the plumbing underneath the stool, which is a nice feature. Bedroom one blows all through the back here, blows underneath these cabinets here and it has one vent comes out right there. Then the far forward one has two vents underneath the couch and one that faces up here. So we have a lot of heat. Plus if you fire up the engine, you can turn on the engine heat, you get all these vents. And we've got electric heat in these. But if you guys have ever used electric heat inside your RV air conditioner, you realize that it is entirely useless. It uses a ton of electricity and puts out mm, lukewarm breath if you let it run for three or four hours. Initially, you won't even be able to feel any heat from it. So those are not ideal. So that's where I'm at so far. Um, was able to get that second furnace going. So we got two and it's it's putting off good heat right now. It's, it's nice in here, it's probably 65 Fahrenheit. Pretty nice. Um, I gotta get this front one working because that's a lot of glass up front. So you're gonna have a lot of cold coming in through there gonna get that one dialed in then I'm gonna go through the rest of the systems on this thing and just make sure everything's working uh, so far all the stuff up here looks pretty good we got solar coming in and even with uh, the furnace gone it says we got a charged battery so 
really cool there. Let's test out the water heater real quick. See if that fires. Yep, it did. Great. So this thing is in top notch condition, especially after I get all three furnaces working, which is just bizarre having anything with three furnaces in it. I've seen some really big campers with two furnaces before, never three. This is new. All right, I'm gonna jump out here. Let's dig into that other furnace. <sighs> you smell that? That's the smell of freedom. You know how you get freedom? RVs. You know what's great about RVs? Everything. Guys, you know what's even better than the Barth Motorhome behind me? Is winning your very own RV. And yes, you can do that today. You can jump on over to omaze.com forward slash Life of Lind, and you guys could score a really sweet Airstream Interstate 24X, and it is the ultimate like off-road RV that you can get on the market right now. So unlike the Barth Motorhome behind me, the brand new Interstate 24X has all kinds of amenities and technology. I don't know what that is. The cabin is completely configurable in it so you can arrange it and move things around to set it up just how you need it, whether you're mountain biking or surfing or just camping with the missus or with your dog. There's my dog. The Airstream seats six people, sleeps too comfortably, but you know, some people can pass out on the floor and whatever else you get into with this adventure van. Air conditioner, check. Yeah. Furnace, check. Got that. 42 inch light bar. I don't have that. This Airstream does, that's sweet. It's got full bathroom, awning, two exterior wash stations. Wow, solar power. I got solar, but so does this. All electric refrigerator, which is really nice. Gets rid of the propane refrigerator. If I got a rig like this, I would be up in the mountains in no time. Even if it's, you know, December like it is and it's snowing sideways, which it hasn't down here yet. But yeah, I'm gonna go take it up in the snow um, and gonna have a Merry Christmas in this thing. That's for sure, because it is, off-road ready with its all-terrain tires. And guys, I haven't even told you the best part about this, and that is the charity that these proceeds support, and that is the Jimmy Johnson Foundation. The Jimmy Johnson Foundation is dedicated to assisting children, families, and communities in their need throughout the United States, and the foundation is currently focusing on funding K-12 through public education, and that's primarily through their Champions Grant program. Guys, for your chance to win this amazing Airstream Interstate 24X and support the Jimmy Johnson Foundation, a great cause. Please go to omaze.com forward slash Life of Lind. Again, that's omaze.com forward slash Life of Lind. Link's down in the description. Let's get back to the barth. So I can't get this thing to fire off of either one of these old control boards. I don't have any more new ones to steal and use. Um, so I'm hoping maybe I clean this igniter up. It's got some corrosion. Clean it up, put it back together, try it again, see what happens. All right, we're going to see if a simple Igniter cleaning does the trick. Tappy, tappy. No, doesn't want to. Attempt number 276.5. Nope. Spark and fire. Turn this off and hook up the old control board. Um, that way I don't have to mount this one. Well, the answer to that was no. The other control board, the igniter, would not ignite at all. So I swapped those out. I'm going to cycle it off and on again. Make sure it works. Button it up. It's really annoying when you put something back together that was working and then it quits working. Nothing. Attempt number 327. Got the igniter back out again. Okay, attempt number 872. Here go. Ha ha! We have 
campfire. Fire staying lit. I'm gonna see if I can button all this up now. Wow, we have three furnaces. They're all working. This is great. Everything looks great in here. I think I have more propane than that. Whatever, anyway. Tanks are all empty because she's winterized. Just give a double check, make sure everything's still in pristine condition. Lights, oh yeah. Let's uh, fire her up and just let her warm up for a bit. Make sure everything's still good up here. Two pumps when it's cold. One, two. Fires right up. Little belt squeak. Looks like it's from the alternator. Oh yeah. Good to go. Well, I've gone through and kind of checked everything else out in here. Seems like everything's good to go for the winter. I'm gonna run these furnaces a little bit today. Just get them real nice and hot. Make sure they stay functioning so they can shut down properly and then come back on like they're supposed to. So I'm gonna do that. But other than that, I think this thing's pretty dialed in, ready for the winter. Would like to try uh, using it in a really cold overnight scenario. See what it does. See how much propane it uses. Might do that next. We'll see if it gets real cold in the next couple of nights. So uh, maybe I'll come out here and fire things up and maybe we'll set up a scenario of uh, what it'd be like to live in this thing in extreme conditions. So maybe here in the next couple of days, it'll get pretty cold at night and we can uh, fire this thing up and just uh, use it overnight. See how it does. All right, it's only a couple days later and I guess we got our witch and Arctic front move through and uh, temperatures are dropping quite rapidly. Yesterday it was 60, uh, wind started blowing about 50 miles an hour. I woke up, it was about 17 degrees. Right now I think it's like 20 something, uh, but it's gonna get down to about six tonight. So perfect test for the Barth. Got it sitting over here, running on uh, battery and solar. Well, not solar anymore, it's dark out, but uh, running on battery. We're gonna fire up the furnaces see how long this thing lasts and uh, see if we can get it up to temperature. Let's go uh, see what it is inside. Ah. Good news, I got this thing working. So it's about 25 outside. It's actually a little colder than that because uh, the temperature probe is actually behind the refrigerators inside the vent. So it is kind of inside the RV a little bit. So it's not out in the wind, but Probably about 22 out there right now. 34 degrees in here. Haven't had the heat on in here. Came out, turned the lights on a few minutes ago. So we can do some filming. So since we are running off of just solar, this thing's not plugged in. So all that we have is the uh, batteries that were charged up today with our 200 watt solar panels on the roof. All right, so we're gonna start our uh, temperature monitoring. Let's fire up the furnaces. What are we sitting them at? 70? Bam, hydro flame on. Hydro flame on. Hydro flame on. All right, let's see how fast we can get from 34 degrees up to 70. Keep in mind, this rig's not hooked up to utilities right now. So we have no power coming in everything that we're using right now was charged into our battery packs by the sun and we're running three furnaces plus lights uh plus the random stuff that stays on in this thing all the time yeah it's already bouncing between low and fair so we're already sucking down the juice i'm gonna kill the fluorescent lights because those draw a lot more than these leds one last thing for tonight i'm fixing a major comment thing Everybody comments about how fix your clock, fix your clock. You need fix your clock. It's always on 
151. All right, let's fix our clock. We got a, a Bulva. I think that's a decent clock. I'm no clock expert. Well, yep. <clears throat> got a little bit of the, uh, the acid going on there. She's a little crusty. What you're witnessing is the very careful restoration of a Bulva wall clock. All right, fresh energizer. Popping her on in. Oh, oh, hey, no, that's not how that works. You're supposed to keep going around. What, why didn't it work? Well, just like everything else on here, the RV, we always just hope it's something simple like a battery or a wire or something. Guessing we still just have corrosion buildup in here. File that off with our really horrible knife that I found. Normally I have a much nicer one, uh, but I use them all the time and apparently lose them, so. Some people are picking up some really nice free knives and I'm down to using this. Yeah, works. Getting two degrees. Still got lights, so we must have plenty of battery power, but this table is physically cold. I can tell that everything in here is right at freezing. Oh, it made it one more click. Oh, another click. Oh, it's back. Maybe it just wants the time set, you know. There it is, the moment everybody's been waiting for. I fixed the clock and put batteries in it. Beautiful. All right, we're just gonna watch temperature, see if all these furnaces work. If we still maintain power. Maybe this thing could be usable for full timing, even in the wintertime. <laughs> Made it up to 68 degrees in here. Still says we're full on propane. Battery is barely hanging on, but all the lights and stuff are still bright. It is actually, I just checked my phone. It is actually only 17 degrees Fahrenheit outside for our friends overseas. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in Celsius. We can look it up. So, 17 degrees Fahrenheit outside, 68 degrees Fahrenheit inside. All three furnaces were gone. Got us up here pretty fast when we set it at 6.30ish. It's like 8.30ish. So, so two hours, but this is a very big space and every surface in here was cold. Everything in here had been sitting in the 35 degree temperature that it was inside. So everything was about the temperature of a refrigerator so panels, cupboards, plastics, table, everything. It was pretty cold. So it took us a little while to get up to this temperature. Now that we're here, I'm sure I could probably kick off probably a couple of the furnaces and just run on one and maintain a, a decent temp. So I'm gonna do that and um, see how it turns out in the morning. I'm gonna shut off the rear furnace and the front furnace, we're just gonna go with the center one. And it's firing all different directions and heating the bathroom too. So I'm gonna do that. See if this thing will run all night on a solar charge on the batteries. All three furnaces are working great now. Really excited about that. Um, all, the, all the other systems on this thing seem to be working great. The one last thing I gotta fix on this is that generator needs that fuel pump. So once I get that done, this thing's dialed in. You could roam the country and live in it if you wanted to. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it because I have six people in my family and although this thing is massive, it doesn't have a lot of sleeping space. Huh. I just found out where some of the cold's coming from. I think these vents got a little warped this summer, the little crank up ones. 
because uh, I left them up all summer when it was hot in here so it could vent itself. And now they don't close all the way. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna let this one furnace just run. See if we can uh, maintain a decent temperature here overnight. And see if the batteries will hold on. I don't know, it's a long time. We've been going for a little over two hours now with lights and all the furnaces going. And while the lights are still pretty bright, I don't know if they'll be able to make it through all night. So I'll shut, uh, I'm going to shut the lights off. We'll just switch down to one furnace, see what happens. Good morning. It is chilly out here. Let's go check on the berth. See how she did. Let's see if the batteries made it through all night. Oh. I hear the furnace running. This thing might be viable for moving around and not being hooked up to utilities because the light's still on and the furnace is running in here. Uh, it's not the 64, 68-ish degrees we left it at. <laughs> All right. Well, we still have enough juice to fire up the lights. And uh, the one furnace was able to keep it at 50 four degrees in here, which is very livable. I don't know how much it ran. I don't know if it cycled off and on a couple times, but it's definitely still putting out heat. Um, like I said, that's just the one furnace that we left on was the one in the middle. So it had to heat this whole space, but uh, it's very comfortable. It's warm in here in the mid fifties. Yeah, this thing could do it. You could definitely live in this thing and travel full time. If we get the fuel efficiency up on the main engine for driving, that would be great because uh, if you guys watched my first video, second video, second video on this, $300 to drive through Nebraska was uh, a little expensive. And now I think the cost of fuel is quite a bit more. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this little ride, uh, getting this rig fixed up and ready for winter time. We got tons of heat now. We got everything working, dialed in. It's just, it's become a great machine. I'm really happy with uh, how it's turned out. Still haven't replaced this gross carpet. Been busy with the shop build, guys. <laughs> so I don't know if I'll get around to that or not. But that's it for now. I'm going to be uh, getting things ready for some severe winter camping. Um, I want to take some stuff out when it's supposed to get really bad out see what it does um i've always wanted to test my little red camper bob out in a blizzard and see how that does so and this well i mean you wouldn't be able to drive it in the snow because you'd just crash it probably but this would be cool to try out too see if you could live in it i'm super stoked with the batteries these are the original house batteries that were in this thing when i found it and they were dead and um they just charged up on the drive home and they've been good since then <laughs> So, pretty cool. I'm going to shut things down, guys. Thank you guys for watching. It means a lot to me, especially if you guys are hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, that sort of thing. Shoot a comment down below. What's the next step for this thing? I'm really, I'm at ends. I haven't used it in a couple months now. It's a little too small for my family, just for the sleeping arrangements, but it's huge. This would be great couples coach. And it's a really cool piece of 1980s nostalgic RVing. Is that a thing? maybe and there you have it guys thanks again so much for tuning in today and another huge shout out to amaze for sponsoring today's video again that's amaze.com forward slash life will end thank you guys again so much for watching god bless you we'll see you next time